In this video, I'm going to show you how to mill rough lumber so it's flat and smooth and square and true. You can see how this piece is concave on one side and it's convex on the other. This is fairly common. The lumber would have been sawn flat but developed this shape as it dried. The first milling step involves making a flat face on the board using the jointer. The question is, which face do you put down if you have a choice? This is the convex side. Let's try putting that down first and see what happens. You see how that board rocks back and forth? It's very difficult to mill a flat face that way with that sort of starting point. If you've got a concave face, you put that down first and you'll have a very stable starting point. We're at the jointer now. First of all, the fence doesn't enter into this operation at all. I mean, you can touch the fence with the wood as you work, but it doesn't actually position the wood in any way. You're only milling that first face. You're also going to want to adjust the depth of cut. A sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch is good. And then you can fire up the jointer, push that wood across, slow and steady. You're imposing a flat face on the formerly concave surface of the wood. Uh, sometimes one pass is enough, but usually it takes two or three. We're doing pretty well here, as you can see. We've got a nice flat face where it used to be concave, although not on its whole length. Uh, there still is a rough area at the trailing end of the board, so another couple of passes are in order. So now we're in good shape. This face is milled to perfection and we're ready to move on to stage two. The purpose of the second stage on the jointer is to make an edge that's square to the face of the board we just milled, and as you can see, we're a long way from that now, but the job of the jointer is to fix that, and that's what we're going to do next. Now, before we actually get to milling that square edge, we need to make sure that the fence of the jointer is square to the bed. And I use a 4-inch metal engineer square for this. It's a lot more accurate than traditional woodworking squares, and it works really well. You just want to position that fence so that there's no gap between both of the arms of that engineer square. With your jointer ready to go, there's one thing I need to explain. This is the face that we milled in stage one, and it's got to be held tight against the fence of the jointer during this second phase. It doesn't really matter what the bottom edge of the wood does, but the, the milled face needs to go against the fence. So we switch on and firmly press that wood against the fence and take the pass over the jointer. It almost always takes more than one pass, but let's take a look here and see what we've achieved so far. So you can see that the blades have removed some wood in that 90 degree orientation, but there's still some rough areas that weren't contacting the blade. And you can see how this plays out with the engineer square. Cast your gaze to the right hand side of the piece of wood right there and you can see that there's a little bit of a gap. Uh, we're not perfectly flat and square across the whole thickness of the board. Looks like a little thing but it's pretty important that we get this done right. So another couple of passes and this problem will be solved. So it's the same operation as before. Uh, slow and steady with the wood pushed tight against the fence and uh, two or three more passes will take care of it. Just as a little aside here, whenever you can joint short wood, you're better off than longer pieces. So it always makes sense to cross cut your wood to rough length first. So you're doing this jointing operation on shorter pieces. The shorter they are, the easier it is to make them square with what you're learning here. So as you can see, we're in good shape. We've got an edge that's square to a face. Everything's flat and straight and we've completed two of our four steps in milling this piece of wood. The next step is to create a flat, smooth, straight second face using the thickness planer. I'm adjusting this machine for a depth of cut. This particular model has a visible indicator. I'm aiming for about a sixteenth of an inch of cut for this initial pass. So fire up the thickness planer and push that piece of wood through for the first time. If you remember the face we're planing now used to be convex so we're going to be taking wood off the middle of the board and if you look closely you can see how the middle is smooth and the outer edges are still rough. Um, a few more passes will fix that where it's still convexing down a little bit. In most applications I'll advance the cut by about half a turn of the depth of cut wheel. You might want to do it less than that if it's a very wide piece uh, and you can go more than that if it's a narrower piece but just a matter of repeating the process lowering the cutter head incrementally until that face is not only flat and straight but the overall thickness of the board is what you want too. The thickness planer is great for smoothening wood but it also allows you control over the thickness 
which is a great thing, especially if you're into designing some of your own projects. So there you have it. We've got a nice, flat, smooth, square board. There's one edge that we haven't done anything with yet, but that'll be trimmed to final width on the table saw uh, with the blade set to 90 degrees. But as you can see, this both of these faces are now flat, which is what we want, and the jointed edge is perfectly square to it. This was a rough piece of wood, and now it's smooth and true, and we can do some great things with this kind of wood.